So welcome to this webinar um, for Arts University Bournemouth. So all of you who have signed in, you have applied to our courses and some of you already have an offer, so congratulations. So my name is Chizu. Um, I'm a senior international officer for Arts University Bournemouth. And um, I also have my colleagues and um, also a current student, Caitlin, with us today. So over to you, um, Caitlin. Um, hi, I'm Caitlin. I am currently a third year student at AUB, um, finishing up a degree in uh, costume and performance design. Um, and then I'm also kind of in the same boat with you guys because in the fall I will be going on to the MA for historical costume. Um, so yeah, at this point I know answers to most questions um, regarding student life and things like that. Um, so, you know, uh, feel free when we get into Q&A stuff, um, you know, I'll uh, be answering um, questions as they come up. So don't worry, go ahead and answer something uh, or ask something. Um, but yeah, and then uh, we also have Siobhan on, um, <laughs> who I'm just going to turn this off and over to you, Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, as Chizzy said, welcome to this webinar today. Um, my name is Siobhan Elliott and I am one of the senior international officers within the international office at AUB. Um, so I'll be co-presenting this presentation with Chizu and then at the end of the presentation we will be answering as many questions as we possibly can and then happy to hear from as many of you after the webinar. Um, my email address will be on the final slide um, so you're welcome to get in touch with with us personally and um, so that we can answer any further questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we've got a few items on today's agenda. So um, we will be looking at um, um, some areas in admissions, accommodation and visas. And as Siobhan mentioned, um, at the end of the um, presentation, we'll do our best to answer any other questions that you might have. So, um, first of all though, I'm sure that you've attended quite a few webinars by now and then been using Zoom, so um, you're probably quite familiar with it, but um, I just wanted to let you know that you will not be on camera. You can see me and you can see Siobhan and Caitlin when their cameras are on, but um, we cannot see you. And if you had questions during the um, presentation, you're more than welcome to type that in in the Q&A section. So that should be usually at the bottom of your screen. So um, type these in and um, we'll do our best to answer. And um, if we don't get to answer your questions, um, as Siobhan said again, um, you can send them in. We'll send you that slides with you. So you will get um, Siobhan and my email addresses and WhatsApp numbers. So you will have other opportunities to ask us. So we'll look at the current situation first. And um, the first thing um, we'd like to let you know is that most important thing for AUB is the health and safety of everyone of this AUB community. And that includes you, every one of you who have applied and hold the offer. And as of today, um, so the university is open, but the campus is of course closed. But as of today, AUB hopes to reopen the campus for September 2020. So this is where we are working towards. And therefore, we do ask you to um, proceed as planned with your September plan, if that's possible. And having said that, though, um, of course, um, university is closely monitoring the situation. It's forever changing, as all, um, all of us know. And following that guidance of that UK um, government on all matters as well. So it is possible that um, things can change. So if there are any changes, we will, of course, let you know as soon as possible and um, 
send you any um, additional information in writing. So um, we are from the international office of the Arts University Bournemouth and our message is quite simple and clear. Um, we're here to help, so if you have any questions, concerns or updates that you'd like to ask us or share with us, just let us know. So let's go into um, admissions. So when we receive and review your application, we look at it as a whole. So we will never just look at your academic results to um, decide um, the result for you. So we are aware of the changes and cancellations that are um, related to exams and qualifications. So you probably have lots of concerns about it, but we are aware of that. And if you can send any updates, um, that would be great. And um, if we think that there might be any impact on your application, we will contact you as soon as possible. So for you, if you have um, um, applied for BA, UCAS is adjusting the deadlines. So um, you still, but you still have the deadlines. So make sure that um, you will check these. And then for students who have applied to foundation and MA courses, um, you have more flexibility with the deadlines. So if your exams have been cancelled, again, we are aware that um, many of the organisations and governments have cancelled um, final exams for many graduating students this year. Um, majority of them, if not all of them, have confirmed that they will be awarding your qualifications on the basis of the work that you already have completed. And where your results are awarded, um, we will accept these results, even if you did not write the final exams. So where the qualification is awarded, um, please be assured that we will accept these. We'll be happy to accept that. And I do hope that that would take a bit of um, weight off your shoulders. And if you are concerned that you will not receive your final results or qualification, sorry, not results, final qualification, could you please contact us so that we can discuss this specifically with you? So that would be fantastic. So if your final grades are not what you expected, um, I mentioned this um, in the last slide um, or two before, um, but please do not worry because we do look at the um, application as a whole. But um, more so this year, we completely understand and appreciate that it's been such an unusual, very difficult year for all of you. And you've had to deal with um, such an unusual circumstance. So um, we will take this into consideration. And um, so we'd like to um, emphasize that your final um, grades alone will not um, determine whether you get an offer or not. So things like personal statement and also portfolio, if you've been requested to submit your portfolio, these are particularly um, important thing in your application. So we will be reviewing your application as a whole. So once you receive your results, um, please send them to the admission and then they will review it. And um, we're always happy to consider near miss grades. So if your final grades aren't what you expected, maybe a little bit lower, don't worry, and then please just send them in. And then um, as long as the rest of your application is strong, we're always happy to consider. So moving on, it's to accepting your offer. So if you've applied to um, BA, you are bound by the UCAS deadlines. Um, and um, UCAS has extended the deadlines 
but please be sure to um, log in to your account and then check what your deadlines for accepting the offers are. So try and please try and meet the deadlines for this. And if you applied for foundation or master's programs, again, um, your deadline's a little bit more flexible. Um, just to let you know, um, it's always a good idea to accept the offer as soon as you decide to um, come and study with us, because without accepting the offer, um, you cannot apply for the halls of residence. So from the next slide, I will pass it over to Siobhan. Thanks, Chizu. Um, so what we're going to have a look at next are um, English language requirements. Um, and this is something that we're being asked quite often about. Um, so we felt like we wanted to kind of clarify a few things and reassure you. Um, apologies if English is your first language and this doesn't relate to you. Um, but I know that there's a, a mixture of different nationalities um, attending this webinar, so we thought we would um, give a little bit more clarity on the current English requirements. Um, so AUB accepts a range of other English language qualifications, um, not just the IELTS test. Um, we understand that lots of test centres are currently closed. Um, and students are struggling to book a test and you're not sure if you will be able to sit a test which is perhaps already booked. Um, so the good news is we do accept other tests. Um, there is a link here which is really useful um, as reference. So um, the um, AUB website English qualifications section um, and that shows you all of the different English language qualifications that we will accept um for admission um, the good news is we have a new test which we are accepting um, and you should have all received an email about this if you have a language condition um, the test is called language cert and it is a completely online test so you don't have to physically go to a test center um, to take this english language test um, so as I said, it's online and it will be accepted for admission to many of AUB's um, courses. Um, we're happy to consider other English results for applicants who do not require a Tier 4 visa. Um, so if you're coming to the UK and you don't need a visa, then there are even more options for you. Um, those of you who will be coming to study on a Tier 4 visa, um, it must be an approved English test, and that's because of government regulations um, for your visa. Um, but do you know that it's not just IELTS that we're accepting, there are other options for you. Um, AUB students that are proceeding to the next level of study are not required to submit English scores. Um, so for those of you who may already be studying with us, like Caitlin, for example, and are going on to the next level of study, um, then you don't need to submit any additional English tests. Okay, next slide, please. So um, we are also running pre-sessional English courses. Um, these are for students who have applied to any of our bachelor or our master's programs and who need to improve their English language levels before starting the course. Um, so we have extended the start dates for these courses um, and they will be split between an online delivery and an in-person delivery. So normally all of our pre-sessional courses would be in-person on campus, um, but obviously with the current situation, we've had to reassess our offer. And so we do now have the option to do um, an 11 week pre-sessional course where you have six weeks online and five weeks in person. And then there is also the five week pre-sessional course which is in person on campus. Um, and again, those of you who have an English language condition attached to your offer, um, you will have received information about this by email. Um, so definitely have a look at that where there's more details such as prices, dates, and how to book onto these courses. Um, so on this slide, you can see the entry requirements for these different courses. So if you are entering the bachelor year one, 
then we are looking for a UK VI IELTS score of 5.0 with no less than 4.5 in each band. Um, and then for the BA year two and year three, we're looking for a score of 5.5 with no less than five in each band. And then moving on to the five week pre-sessional, if you're entering year one of one of our BA courses, um, we're looking for 5.5 with 5.0 in each band. And then for year two and three and the masters, it's an overall score of 6.0 with 5.5 in each band. Um, if you could just go to the next slide, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Oh, back one, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, so because, as we said, we were aware that there are many test centres that have closed, um, and it's difficult currently to obtain a UK VI IELTS. Um, for the online pre-sessional component, we will consider non-UK VI IELTS tests. Um, sorry, non-UK VI tests, for example, the language cert tests, which I mentioned. Um, you can also, um, so if you're required to submit a UK VI IELTS score to obtain a visa to travel to the UK, for the in-person pre-sessional course. Um, so those of you that are coming for that element of the course, you will need the UK VI IELTS school in order to get your visa. Um, but this should give you additional time to obtain the UK VI um, test required to apply for the visa. Um, and as we mentioned here, every effort should be made to obtain a UK VI IELTS prior to starting the pre-sessional English course. But we hope that that online section gives you the additional time um, and that element does not require you to have the um, UK VI IELTS. Okay. So these are the, um, the other tests that we will accept for the online um, pre-sessional course. And you can see here, the equivalencies as well to the um, IELTS and these are available on our website so if you're not sure which test to take or you're not sure which score you need um, then definitely check out our website or you can just be in touch with one of us directly and we can give you some advice on the different English language tests that we are accepting and what the um, score would need to be for the level of study that you're coming in at. Okay. Okay, so um, we wanted to cover a little bit about accommodation because we have also been receiving a lot of questions about accommodation and um, with the current situation that's happening. Um, so we wanted to reassure you and let you know that for the last couple of years, we have been able to house all of our first year students in university accommodation. And we don't currently have an application deadline for our accommodation. So um, you can apply for your accommodation once you receive an offer from the university. So although there is no deadline, um, once, as Chizzy mentioned just now, once you have chosen to come and study with us, um, it is worth then considering applying for your accommodation. Um, so 24 hours after accepting your offer in your My Application section, um, you'll have an accommodation tile and that will allow you to apply for the accommodation. So you don't have to do this straight away, but see the earlier you do it, the more options there are and the more chance of you having the type of room that you would like. Um, some of you may have already applied for your accommodation. Some of you may already be having a look at what's available. Um, and there are many different options. So it's definitely worth having a look on our accommodation page. Um, and most of them you can have kind of a virtual tour and look at videos and photos and the room plans. Um, so it's really good to have a look at that and decide what type of accommodation you would like to be in. Okay. Um, if the option that you prefer isn't currently showing, so some of you may have already experienced this, um, the first release of rooms were released um, about a month to six weeks ago now. So some of the options um, are showing as sold out. However, there will be a new release of rooms coming out on Monday the 4th of May. 
So if the option that you would prefer is currently not showing, then definitely um, check back in on Monday the 4th of May um, to have a look and see if that option is now available. Um, you can secure the room with a deposit of £150. Um, and of course, because of the current situation, um, if you're not able to travel to the UK and you're not able to start with AUB in September, then the deposit will be refunded to you. Um, if any of you have any questions about any specific um, types of accommodation or the booking process or your application, um, we have a fantastic student advice team who will be able to help you with this. Um, and their email address is here, studentadvice at aub.ac.uk. So definitely worth contacting them with any questions. Um, but of course, we're also here to answer any of your questions um, regarding anything really. Okay. Um, so this is quite a useful slide. Um, and as Chizzy said, we will send these to you. Um, so don't worry about noting these down. Um, but for those of you that are coming into the UK on a visa, then there's a couple of really good references here. You have UKISA um, and also the gov.uk website. And these are being updated on a daily basis um, based on the information received by the government about what's currently happening with the situation. So definitely worth keeping an eye on those. Um, for any more information about English or the pre-sessional courses, then you can look at the um, aub.ac.uk forward slash English. Um, for those of you who have, um, or you've all applied already, um, so if you're still keeping track of your application, then you can look at your My Application Portal, which is where your offer will be updated. Um, so definitely worth keeping an eye on that. Um, UCAS have also got a really good um, reference for those of you who have applied for a BA course um, and you have used UCAS to make your application. Then they are having daily updates based on the information they're receiving. So definitely worth keeping an eye on the UCAS website. Um, the accepted English scores, which we looked at just now, um, we also have information on the AUB website. And then we have a couple of really useful email addresses here. So if you want to get in touch with our admissions department directly, you can contact them on admissions at aub.ac.uk. Um, you have the student advice email that I mentioned, and then there's also the international. So this is our team's um, kind of general email address, um, but we will also give you our direct email and direct WhatsApp um, addresses on the next slide, I believe. Sorry, bit stuck. <laughs> um, sorry, hang on a moment. No worries. Well, while we are um, figuring out, oh, there we go, the next slide. So um, you have my email address at the top there and also my WhatsApp number. And then you have Chizzy's email and WhatsApp number. So if you have any further questions after this webinar, then you're very welcome to get in touch with us directly, either by email or by WhatsApp or telephone. Um, so hopefully those slides that we've shown um, have reassured you a little bit. Um, the main message that we really want to get across in this webinar is that we will be as flexible as we possibly can. Um, we understand that this is a really difficult situation for you all. Um, and we just wanted to reassure you and let you know that we're here to answer any questions um, and we'll be there for you kind of through this whole process. Um, so hopefully you found some of that information useful. Um, I'm just gonna pass over to Caitlin for a couple of minutes um, before we look at some of the questions and answers. Um, just to talk a little bit about her experience as an international student at AUB um, and living in Bournemouth. Okay, Caitlin. Cool. Um, yeah, so I've really enjoyed my time at AUB. Um, what I really have enjoyed is all the hands-on learning experience. Um, since I do costume, it's a lot of practical work. Um, 
where you are learning skills that you know are used in the industry on industry standard equipment um, I also really enjoy the freedom um, that third year brings a lot of it we are working on live projects and briefs and that goes over all of the courses here at AUB I mean final year for film um, everyone does their own crowdfunding pre-production um, and they complete a graduate film um, and those are all very independent with help and support from the tutors but it is really student-led um, and yeah I've just really enjoyed it um, the tutors are lovely I've had a whole lot of support um, especially right now um, in this kind of uh, very up in the air um, time my tutors have been really nice just checking in and making sure everybody is okay um, and Bournemouth is gorgeous I mean it's a seaside town um, there's a whole bunch of sun um, which as someone from California was great so I didn't completely lose all the sun um, that I am used to um, but yeah it's been a really enjoyable experience and I'm super happy that I ended up picking Bournemouth um, and I've grown a lot as a costumer. Um, I've grown a lot academically going into theory wise and thinking about, you know, all of these really important things you need to think of when in coming to design and things like that. Um, and yeah, I've just, I've really, really enjoyed, I've enjoyed it so much that I'm doing another year. If that doesn't tell you something, um, but yeah. It's great. Uh, student life here in general, it's very lively. We are a student town. Um, we have Bournemouth University next door, so there is a big concentration of students in the area. There's a lot of nightclubs and things going on and, you know, lots of fun stuff. We have a couple different festivals throughout the year, like Arts by the Sea. Um, and we're also about two two and a half hours away from london so it's really easy to go in and go visit the city for a little bit whether it's museum research work or just a fun weekend away um yeah so great thanks caitlin and <laughs> um, so i think we'll head over to the q and a's now then to see which questions okay. Asked. One thing I was just going to mention is that if you have emailed over some questions prior to the webinar, um, we will email you back because quite a lot of those questions have been quite personal to each student situation. Um, so please be assured that you will get an answer from us by email, um, most likely tomorrow. Okay. So Caitlin, would you mind reading out the questions and um, we'll try and answer. Absolutely. Um, so this first one, um, I received an offer and submitted the transcript before April. I want to know when I will receive the mail of the tuition deposit payment um, and cash. So it sounds like they're looking for when they will receive all the information um, and about their offer and things like that. Okay, so um, perhaps, um, so I, I guess you've been checking your portal and emails, so um, I'm sorry that it hasn't reached you yet, um, but it should be going to you fairly soon, I would imagine, and the payment um, can be made um, through our online payment um, portal, and, um, and then the CAS um, usually, um, after May um, for BA and I think June onwards, you can um, request to have a CAS. So um, perhaps if you would like to email me or, or Siobhan later with your name and um, your student number, and then one of us will get back to you and check that what's been happening, if that's okay. All right, um, so the next one is, are EU passports still valid concerning international and non-international questions? Yeah, it's of course, um, EU passport is um, yes, yeah, still valid. So, um, so for example, if you have an um, EU passport and then that's what you are using to um, register with us, enroll with us um, at AUB and um, yeah, as far as we know that um, you're not required to apply for a visa or anything like that. However, the, you might know this already, but tuition fee status um, really depends on many different elements. 
So um, some students who do have an um, EU passport, but they might be actually paying um, overseas um, tuition fee. Is there anything I should add, Siobhan? No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. So at the moment, as things stand, your EU passport will be valid um, and for entry into the UK as well. So, good. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. Oh. I've accepted the offer for an unconditional MA, congratulations, um, <laughs> but I haven't paid the deposit. When's the latest time they would need to pay the deposit? Hmm. I think it depends. So for if you need to apply for a tier four visa, um, particularly, then I think you would like to leave enough time to be able to do this and then to apply for a tier four, um, you will have to have the um, cash issued by us. And then for that, we request um, a deposit. Um, so which is a minimum of one times fee. So if it's MA, um, as of today, it would start um, later in September. Um, so I would say um, the latest time, I think we could still turn around it and then hopefully you still have enough time to do it. Um, by paying the deposit by probably late July. August might be still okay, but um, over the summer, um, visa centers are extremely busy. So you would probably want to look into applying for a tier four with the um, express service or priority service it's called. So if you yeah. do not need a visa, um, I think we can wait a bit longer. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see. Um, and we answered part two of this question in the presentation, but I think it's important to reiterate, um, if you do put the deposit down on your accommodation, um, you will be able to get that refunded back to you if you are unable to attend in the fall. Yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, our student advice team have confirmed that. And if for any reason you can't travel, then that, re that £150 deposit will be refunded for sure. Um, and I will say they asked if they'll need to apply for accommodation again the next year, um, if they end up deferring. Yes, you would need to, yeah. All right, um, when will the 11 week language course begin and what application will be used? Okay, let me just have a quick, quick look. <laughs> So yeah, so we've just set course. the dates for this call. Um, in terms of application, um, you should be able to apply through the My application. As far as I understand, there will be an option in your portal um, where you can submit the application for the 11 week pre-sessional course. Mm -hmm. And the deadline for um, registering for the course is 15th of June. And um, also the, um, the course starts on the 22nd of June and then ends on Friday the 18th of September. Um, sorry for that as we're walking behind me, but we're all working from home. <laughs> so, um, so yes, so that's for both BA and master's students. So 22nd of June mm -hmm. is the start date of um, 11 weeks. I might as well mention five weeks, perhaps. And that would be, just bear with me. Um, it's going to start on the 17th of August. And the deadline to register is 26th of July. Okay. Um, all right, is there a deadline for accepting the unconditional offer for an MA program? Um, I think I'd just reiterate what Chizzy's just said in that it just really is to give yourselves enough time to be ready to get to the UK. So there is no set deadline as such, but obviously the earlier that you're able to um, accept the offer, then you can kick off the visa process, the accommodation process. Um, so it's really just to give yourselves enough time to have everything in place to arrive in time for the course um, in September. All right. Um, 
If we are unable to start in September <coughs> due to travel restrictions, will we be able to defer our offer to 2021? Of course, yeah, you can defer your place. Um, so let us know that's um, what you decide to do or need to do. Um, we usually ask you to um, accept the offer to be able to defer the place. And, um, um, and then usually um, we also request that you have met the um, conditions of the offer um, by the call starts this year. However, the situation is completely unpredictable and then very, very different from the each year. So um, from previous years. So um, we hope that there would be um, flexibility, particularly for, um, of course, um, English exams, which is very difficult to take at the moment. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, what is the cost of living approximately weekly or monthly in Bournemouth? Oh. <laughs> the question for you, Caitlin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will say accommodation for your first year, you would need to assume that it's going to be minimum probably 160 to 170 a week for student accommodation your first year. Um, and it really does depend on the rest of it um, in terms of food shopping and how savvy you are, kind of like that. Um, I will say if you are living in town center, invest in a bus pass at the beginning of the year, your wallet will thank you for it later on. Um, it really does like fluctuate um, depending on how you do it. But I also believe um, on the website, there's a suggested amount to have in your account in order to cover the first year's expenses um, for a tier four visa. So I would look at that number um, and see kind of where that would all fall in terms of budgeting. Let me see if I can, I'll see if I can find it while we're answering another one. Yeah, so I think the amount for a tier four visa, correct me if I'm wrong, to do it's just over £9,000 for the year that they need to show in their account. So we would say that's how much you need to show in your account for the visa. Um, but I think cost of living in Bournemouth would come slightly under that. Um, obviously, it's cheaper than living in cities like London or big cities. Um, but yeah, as Caitlin said, um, depends on your lifestyle and the type of accommodation that you choose as well, because the accommodation really ranges in price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As someone okay. currently looking for accommodation, man, does it really change in price? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there a possibility that the fall term will be postponed to January or is it more likely that it would be online? Um, so at the moment, as we said, we are really hoping and the university management team is working towards the um, term starting as planned in the autumn. Um, but as Chizzy said, you know, these times are very unpredictable and things are changing. So there has been no set plans yet as to whether teaching will be online or whether there may be a possibility of the term starting three, four weeks later, or as you've said, even perhaps in January. Um, but you guys will be the first people to know as soon as any of those decisions have been made. So um, if, if it is delayed, um, you will be sent an email um, and kept up to date with any decisions that the university management team are making. Um, and we'll make sure to be in touch with you as soon as possible. Um, I don't know if you want to add to that, Shizu. Well, I think it's great. Yeah, okay. I will say, if you're like me, who likes to check every couple of days to see if there's been a change, um, on the <laughs> AUB website, we do have a page that updates both prospective and current students for COVID-19 information. So if you want to bookmark that um, or things like that, that will be updated as information is released as well. So if you're like yeah. me, who keeps continually hitting refresh, um, <laughs> there is a d another way to get information. So. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Let's see. Um, is there a Facebook page for students or other platform of the students? Um, there are different Facebook pages and groups for students. We tend to group up by college. So there's a 
performing arts one, so that would be dance, makeup, costume, and I do know a good bit of film that are also in there because we collaborate a lot together. Um, and other courses do have Facebook groups and pages and things like that. Um, as for first year students, um, usually a group, like a Facebook group is made um, for the incoming students for student accommodation. So once you apply, um, <laughs> sorry, pardon me. Um, and you get your place confirmed at student accommodation, you can go ahead and search um, and see if somebody has started a group for that accommodation year. Um, that's a really great way you can kind of link up with who else would be in your flat and see who would be in your building and things like that. Um, I mean, there's other places like student room that a lot of people try and chat and see who else is on their course. Um, that's kind of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have our, um, sorry, you may have mentioned this, um, Caitlin, the international Facebook page as well, which you follow, and the main AUB Facebook page as well, which is good for, as a resource of information. And usually we do create an event for orientation for international students um, before it begins, so you can talk to other international students before you leave. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, Question about a visa. Um, received a conditional offer and I need to send my final grades, but I don't know when I'll have them. So can I apply for a visa with a conditional offer? Unfortunately, um, we do request that you have an unconditional offer. If you're wishing to start direct to um, foundation, BA or master's course. Um, if you are hoping to do precessional program first, then um, as this is part of your condition, so um, we, we will issue the CAS for you with conditional offer. So um, perhaps um, if you have concerns about this because of the delays and cancellations that you, you just do not know when you get the qualification, um, please contact us and then we will discuss this with you individually. Um, what is the criteria for a near miss grade, as was mentioned earlier? <laughs> this is quite a hard one to say because it really depends on how your application is as a whole. So if your personal statement is fantastic, you know, completely, um, you know, it's very individual and then strong and then we feel like we get to know you and what you want to do. Um, and also if your portfolio is strong, so um, it's very difficult for us to give you the exact grades, like say if it's an IB that you're doing and we request 30 for most courses and 30 to, to um, architecture, um, but um, it's a hard one for us to tell, but um, I think our message would be um, regardless of your results, do send them in um, because without you doing that, we will not be able to make any decision. So, um, and then we'll see what we can do. 